start uh, my uh, contextualization in uh, Munich, more or less, in, uh, with a, for me, very interesting uh, uh, figure, which is an artist, a uh, sculptor. His name is Adolf Hildebrand. He's uh, uh, actually from, uh, from, of course, Germany. Yeah, that's during the travel in, uh, in Italy, in uh, the early uh, 20th century, so something between 1906 and 1907, uh, visited two squares, two monumental places in Italy, and uh, describes in an article that uh, was published in a journal called Raumkunst, uh, uh, talks, explains his emotions. The emotion of seeing public spaces that were, in the beginning of the 20th century, devastating. Devastated in for two reasons, two practical let's say, reasons. The first one I will not talk about is destruction, but I will talk just about the emotions that Hildebrand talks about when he uh, sees the square in front of uh, the, uh, the cathedral at Santa Maria del Fiore in Florence and in the front of the baptistery. Uh, he sees the, a new configuration of the square which was completely erased and the new palace was built during. Rest, urban restoration in the end of the 19th century, and he talks about the uh, complete, uh, um, uh, the, 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 the context, the, this new context completely changed the sense of every architectural piece that uh, composed both the cathedral and the baptistry, especially the details. The details completely lost their sense, completely lost their spatial context, he uses this word. And uh, um, this new configuration changed completely the sense of the architectural uh, composition. The second square, which he visits in this uh, uh, journey to Italy, was Piazza San Marco in Venice. And he, has the, he was lucky to see uh, Venice in a very very strange moment when the uh, Campanile di San Marco, the tower of San Marco, collapsed in the uh, beginning of the 20th century. Uh, we had uh, serious static problems, and he saw the square without this vertical, vertical end. And he talks about and uh, begins to sketch and uh, design and uh, explain the uh, new situation, which was completely different from the first moment that he visited San Marco. And he talks about the monuments, he talks about the churches, he talks about the, the details, and especially the, the temporary uh, uh, discovery of the square without this vertical end. And he says that everything has changed, that when you are in San Marco, now you have completely uh, lost orientation, you have completely lost uh, any kind of um, uh, regularity, the view, the regularity that the, 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 the square had originally, and especially, he said that the other monuments, the other procurative, biblioteca, Torre dell'Orologio, now, now are, are behaving like mice when the cat is out of, of the house. And starts to develop, to conceptualize this, his emotions, his interpretations of this shock, or uh, shock of this visit. He said, there is an intimate relationship between the character of the buildings and their spatial context. There are two indissoluble things that we cannot divide, between the building and its spatial context. And he said a very, very, very interesting thing. He said, the speciality of form is for Hildebrand a sensibility that has been lost with the development of museums and the conventions of considering works of art out of their original context. When you, we take a Titian painting, when Napoleon came to Venice and, and took all the paintings to the Louvre, he completely, completely changed the sense of every single painting because he decontextualized it from the churches, from the uh, places where they had it, and so on. So, and the most difficult task of the present moment is to open people's eyes to the general law of all art, namely that the work of art is always conceived as a part of something larger, as a part of a situation. An artistic building, so a building that we can call as architecture with a major A, 
is not valid solely in its own terms, as a part, but as a part of an environment. This sensibility mm, towards spatial characteristics, spatial relationship between architecture, its uh, context, um, is something not isolated in uh, German, of course, with uh, but is a part of a general, general sensibility that uh, art historians, artists, and art theorists uh, have in this, in this years. I'm sorry about this transliteration, but the PowerPoint is different in my computer. So, I will just go through some books that were published in the beginning of the century and I will explain why every, all these books are so important for the Russian context and especially for the uh, Soviet, Soviet, Soviet art. Albert Brinkman, another historian, pupil of uh, Harry Wolfman, pu published a very interesting book, it's called Platz und Monument, so the, 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 the square and the monument. And he, makes a kind of uh, taxonomy, he travels uh, through Germany, he travels through Italy, makes a uh, taxonomy of uh, public spaces, okay? historical public spaces, and the relationship between uh, architectural elements and space, between the, the statues, the monuments, and the space, the, the temporary succeeding okay, of our perception of elements in urban, in urban space. And, Sketches, design, uh, uh, talks about spaces and especially one of the most important uh, uh, similar sketches uh, or, or, or redesigns was Santa Maria del Pace, where, where uh, an entire facade of the church was planned in a specific surrounding. So this describes not, let's say, the, 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 all the stylistic elements of architecture, but mostly the spatial effects that these facades give to. Uh, to people, to people that to, to, to men that walks and experiences architecture uh, in time. The same thing with the, the pavements of the of the you know, uh, squares. The same the, the, the re visual relations between between single elements, and uh, it's a kind of uh, what was used to be called in those years a kind of künstlerische Sehen, so an artistic way of seeing uh, architecture and architecture. There is another very uh, ins inspiring book uh, um, uh, for, for, for the, the architects that were formed in these years, Hermann Mertens, das optische Maschschaft, so it's a kind of optical scale in which uh, Hermann Mertens tries in a very rudimental, proto scientific um, way uh, the, the way how we perceive objects in urban space. So from distance, from a specific angle, and uh, Mertens talks about when we look something from, uh, uh, from, from a certain small distance, we, we, we perceive only details. When we pass back, we can see uh, the whole figure and only after some, some more space and angles we can perceive the object with its surroundings. The artistic quality of the object is when you uh, add all these sensations, all these uh, emotions that you receive uh, uh, in time, in these three different moments, uh, in these three different angles. Talking about Künstlerische uh, Seen and, 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 and this um, uh, extraordinary potential or, or uh, interest in space, space as a, as a primary quality of architecture, is of course a book that more or less no, nobody reads anymore, and it's Camillus, so the uh, city according to its artistic principles, a kind of basic handbook uh, for young architects uh, uh, that form themselves from Nice to Le Corbusier to uh, all the, 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 the architectural art at the beginning of the century, where really the, the exploration of uh, the, the, the conformation of the city and the relationship between empty uh, uh, empty spaces and architecture is absolutely uh, dominant. One of the most uh, uh, intriguing uh, di discovery through time and space is the uh, description of Camillo Zitte about the cathedral in Padua and how uh, only the, the, um, uh, the experience in time can give you the complete idea of the complex architecture that every kind of detail, every kind of portion is dimension and is uh, in relation to a small 
semi-small, small, and uh, a big uh, space. So every, if you want to really to experience the architecture, we have to really uh, spend time uh, and in space. Uh, it's uh, also a question of, let's say, uh, a general s s sensitivity towards this uh, aspect, uh, the, the, the role of perception, the role of uh, urban state, that can, becomes not only the, the object of reflection of isolated artists, uh, but also of the general debate. Uh, journals, magazines, like Stadtbad in Vienna, or the Rankings, where uh, Adolf Hildebrand uh, published his, uh, uh, his uh, articles and his reflection. Just to say, before uh, going further to the let's say, second chapter of uh, this uh, presentation is the Cartolina, is the postcard that uh, Le Corbusier sent in 1915 during his uh, journey, um, sorry, 1918, uh, 1911, during his first journey to, uh, through Germany, uh, using, using Camillo Zitte as the primary handbook of his, uh, let's say, formative experience of space. Uh, urban architecture through urban space developing, explaining, uh, explaining uh, uh, to Manuel Opus the Center about his, his reading of the city. The second very interesting parallel phenomenon, which was very, very important, and you will see later, for, to, for the formation of the young architects, of uh, uh, our architects in Soviet Russia, was the so called foundation of Baroque. Uh, I'm a little bit exaggerating, uh, but uh, in fact, there are parallel to this phenomenon, the sensibility, the spatial quality of architecture was kind of discovered by, discovered by, by, by a series of German uh, art historians, of discovering of this new phenomenon that was defined as Baroque. No? Baroque not, not something as a part of the long history of the Renaissance, as a kind of, kind of barbarian style that developed on the, uh, on the crisis, on, on the ashes of the Renaissance, but as a really as an autonomous, as an autonomous style, as an autonomous epoch that was, uh, 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 it was expressing uh, itself through really the spatial qualities of architecture. And the Corriere is good, the Corriere is good, and so define, started to define the, really the difference between Renaissance and Baroque. And this sensitivity towards a spatial characteristic of architecture gave them also, maybe, or contrary even, the um, possibility to understand Baroque mm, as an autonomous phenomenon with special, uh, special, special characteristic and special, let's say, Psychological, if I can use this, of many physiological uh, characteristic that uh, that Renaissance, in, this, in fact, uh, didn't, didn't have. From Renaissance, they did something that's completely clear, intelligible, to Baroque, that is something that needs time to be experienced and also understood. Because if Renaissance is a kind of te clear tectonic style, Baroque, think about the Romini, uh, the architecture of uh, Pietro da Cortona. Uh, or the German Baroque is very difficult sometimes to uh, understand it from the first point of view. But you need time, you need perception, you need the space, and you need uh, time to uh, uh, get acquainted with all its uh, laws and all its uh, characteristics. Uh, another question is also the role, the urban role of Baroque architecture in. Uh, uh, in the 17th and 18th, in 18th century, we, we were, were also the positioning of the facade, the, 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 um, the, the experience in, 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 in time of the, uh, this Baroque architecture becomes more and more complex. And this is something that becomes really, really interesting from the point of view of the urban dimension till the detail. And uh, especially, especially Wolfen, but not only Wolfen, they start immediately also to uh, ask the Baroque architecture also about other elements of uh, uh, architectural expression. Not only, of course, architecture is a uh, urban uh, dominant, not only architecture is a spatial, but also about the role of the Baroque detail, in which, as 
as uh, 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 Wolfling later Paul Frankel uh, uh, talked about. But the, the really the interesting fact is that we discover more and more in detail this architecture and more different, let's say, emotions this uh, architecture gives to us, more this architecture will be called as artistic. It will have more and more artistic, artistic value. So the, the quality of architecture is, in fact, strictly connected to the spatial quality of, uh, of its architecture, architectural form. So from the total, let's say, uh, uh, urban scale to the small detail and the uh, relation between light, shadow, uh, which, of course, as we saw before the camera, is completely, completely uh, is depicted from the general, general scale uh, of, of space. So, um, very important aspect is this relation between light and shadow, and the effect of shadow uh, on our perception, and the effect of uh, uh, Static hmm, of, of the transmission of the static uh, of the static data hmm, to our tower perception. The corporality, the corporate forms exist only to carry the visible phenomena. Hmm, to they serve light, not the reverse, as in the first paper. So this is in the rest. To play with light, to, to play without our perception of uh, um, of uh, this three-dimensional. I will just close with a very interesting uh, and very famous. Um, Definition, maybe the first definition of architecture is the art of space, given by a German uh, art historian and uh, uh, estate, Albert Schmarzo. He says, Our sense of space, so our round, uh, if you, and spatial imagination, our round fantasy, press towards spatial creation, the round gestalt. They seek their satisfaction in art, and we call this art architecture. In plain words, it is architecture is the creatures of space. The only really specific uh, quality of architecture is that not its stylistic, volumetric, only stylistic and volumetric um, component, but especially this spatial, this spatial effect that gives that gives to uh, us. All these books are more or less translated in Russian immediately in the beginning of, uh, at, at, in the first years of their, um, after they had been published in, uh, in, uh, in Germany. And some of these books were translated by uh, Vladimir Favorsky, a very interesting figure, who was the rector of the Kutemas from the, since the beginning, in the late uh, 1930s. And all these books were, um, let's say, the manuals of the formation of the Soviet army. Uh, mostly, um, I have count, counted more than 300 artists, starting from, from, from Kandinsky, Yablensky, Nangabo, uh, Igor Graba, and so on. Uh, artists that were formed in Germany in those years, especially in Munich. Munich was a kind of, they were, they were, call, they were calling a, a kind of uh, second Moscow, hmm, because they were, they were uh, art schools, very important. Um, um, uh, Point where uh, the Soviet, uh, uh, sorry, Russian artists before the revolution spent their time and uh, formed with with, uh, uh, with, uh, with 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 German with, with German artists and German artists. So one of them was of course Namgato. Namgato, the founder of the Russian constructivism, was a pupil of uh, Heinrich Wölfling. And uh, Namgato, uh, if we can say, the, the, the construction of the sculpture is in space is uh, a kind of uh, artistic exploration through all his career, till the end of the, his career in the, 19, in the 1960s. The idea of uh, not carrying the sculpture, not, not using um, and, and uh, working by eliminating mass, so taking uh, a, a stone and carrying the stone and, 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 and developing a sculpture, but on contrary to build a sculpture with uh, uh, elements, with uh, single linear elements in space is a kind of uh, revolutionary, we can say, artistic experience started not only uh, with, uh, with, uh, within the Russian context, but in the Russian context, it was a kind of ex really exploration of, um, 
uh, of, of the, the what may be very now part of the construct, constructivist arts. So developing torsos, developing uh, uh, sculpture with this formal, uh, with a completely another formal procedure, so not doing sculpture in traditional way of bronze, of uh, uh, but of linear elements uh, in space became a kind of uh, a kind of light motif. And especially light motif with the idea to uh, give this, uh, let's say, Brinkman's uh, uh, original uh, input of infinite images that compose the sculpture. You never have a direct um, privileged view to the sculpture. Not the sculpture has to be seen while you're walking 360 um, degrees around the, the, the sculptural object. And only the experience, only experiencing, it, experiencing it in time and through time can give you the idea of the total, let's say, the total form and the idea of uh, the artistic three-dimensional um, uh, experience. Uh, I will just go straight to the to, to, to the point and just go through a couple of images just to see and explain how constructivism, so construction in space, worked with this new uh, thematic of spatial uh, of, 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 of spatial uh, quality for architectural or in sculptural form. Alexander Korchenko tried to work on a book on prostranstra in space, trying to make a kind of catalog of possible spaces possible um, uh, construction in spaces, in space with uh, different elements, with different um, materials, with different, um, let's say, uh, also tectonic uh, uh, work on, on, on the sculpture, with uh, sculptures that were leaning and with sculptures that were constructed on tables, with, with sculptures of paper, with sculptures of clay, and so on. And constructivism was working in this time, really on this general notion of also of dynamic sculptures. So sculptures that uh, they, they are lean in, in, in the gallery and uh, through our uh, interaction with them. So we blow on sculptures, they could turn, so, so they start to really be something uh, dynamic, dynamic in, uh, in space. Even the, the experience of the first album, so Daniel Dutton especially, especially, is trying to work on the release of on the idea of the collage, the, 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 the dimensional collage of Picasso, trying to transpose it in a three-dimensional space that first becomes a relief and then a, a contrarelief. Contrarelief in that uses a three-dimensional space, the end of the corner of the building, and working with, with elements that interact with us uh, uh, spatially. This becomes immediately a very interesting exploration also in theatre. Theatre as uh, as you may all know, it's a place of the really of the, of the, maybe the most interesting place of, of the expression of the avant-garde uh, in, in this uh, interdisciplinary uh, work between uh, directors, between screen, uh, between uh, writers, architects, and art uh, uh, authors, in which the different moments of the of the play could have in the same stage a play, so a uh, kind of new scenography that um, explore, explores, not that it works on the relation between the play and uh, let's say, in the stage and the story and, 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 the, and the architectural space. I will just show a, a, a series of uh, very interesting um, works and in the, just in the beginning of the 1920s with this rudimental uh, uh, technology and uh, of, of uh, constructing so places for um, uh, places for, for the new theater. Still, the, the work of Lisitz, which is absolutely interesting, we will not talk about him because we, I think we are running out of time, uh, in, in which the idea of in the Mayakov theater is completely to change you know, the spatial role of the, between the public and the actor. So the, the stage and the camera uh, is the, the, the camera, uh, they, they mix between them uh, in different moments and based on, on, on the, this new liturgy even of the, of the, um, uh, 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 the space of the theater, they, 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 they change completely also the, the spatial configuration of the, of the inner, inner, inner space. Before uh, really closing this uh, uh, and starting to talk about really the basic person, I just to 
maybe just, just to point out that, that really the research of uh, uh, AEC which helps me to enter to this complex uh, teaching battle in the uh, Kutemas in, uh, in Moscow uh, by really exploring the, how from the bidimensional prongs uh, this series, infinite series of paintings that um, Lisitsky produced from the 1920s to the 1925, 26, of elements, geometrical, pure elements that relate in a special way in a different axonometric, isometric, uh, uh, total um, clean geometry, in, in, in a kind of very complex spatial relationship between them that slowly becomes the, pr the, 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 the um, process of uh, uh, getting for Lisitsky closer to the architecture, the architecture and especially the, the horizontal, the project of horizontal architecture that uh, Lisitsky uh, produced uh, in 1926 for, uh, for Moscow, uh, con concentrating uh, this series of uh, horizontal skyscrapers in the urban nodes between the uh, concentric and radial uh, development of, uh, of all Moscow. Sign this new kind of uh, um, and architectural element is, is a door, the entrance door got out uh, of, uh, to, to, to get to, to old Moscow and change the idea of the skyscraper, scraper, American skyscraper, which is not anymore uh, vertical but horizontal. But we, that was designed in a very, 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 very sculptural way, in the sense that uh, Lisitsky, he talks about that in a very interesting article in uh, his Asian Snow, 1926, where the whole uh, this rationalistic uh, uh, group of uh, Soviet that tries to explain the uh, secrets of composition uh, based really on our on the, on the notion of perception, how we perceive elements in space through time, through and so on. It's, it's kind of this Osnovi post-reality architecture. So the basic uh, um, um, elements of architectural composition are based really on our psycho uh, psychophysiologic. <coughs> Reaction and interaction with with uh, the reality, with the, 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 the sun. So this is more or less tries to make a three-dimensional object that is never has never the same same. In every angle from every mm, position that we look at this building, it will give us another information, another. In only our experience, when you walk around, we even go through work through, and again, this is a. Mythology of the other guy. Even if we fly over it and we see the fifth passage, huh? so this, all these different elements will give us the top, the information about about this uh, uh, about this uh, um, I will just finish the five six minutes uh, to uh, say something and, and try to contextualize uh, um, this this this. this uh, research in a really study center. It was a study center within the, the mass, uh, a work by Nikola Ladosky, who was the founder of the journal Islistian Snow, which we saw the pages um, a couple of minutes ago, and uh, he was really trying to approach to, approach to this let's say, uh, questions of the speciality of form and speciality of architecture in a kind of scientific, in a kind of scientific and um, uh, the production of this uh, curse uh, in, in the, in, of the Kutemas is extremely, extremely interesting. Yeah, maybe it's one of the most interesting aspects of the story of the in general. And uh, also, yeah, at the same time, very, very uh, kind of exotic, and still not really understood in, in their in, 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 in total, in total. And sometimes the works made by students like the, the work of Alexander Courget, uh, was a kind of, this is a, a jeu, so Courget was a kind of uh, inspiration hmm, be, uh, to the Afghan artists before, uh, when they were working on, on, their, uh, on their projects. And even, uh, not only Lisitsky, but even uh, the great Konstantin Mielikov, who worked on, on uh, the Russian pavilion in 1925 in Paris, um, had the possibility uh, to um, see and, 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 and experience, but not be influenced, but, but really uh, 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 sort of a kind of interaction with the experimental work conducted within, within the school. So the basic curse was 
the, the, like, the kind of introduction to the, to the school. Uh, the first two years were divided in four uh, basic elements, ba basic um, uh, courses of color, volume, graphic, and space. Space was the basic, uh, let's say, the propedeutic process through which a student was uh, experiencing uh, this new phenomena, uh, this new uh, uh, formative, formative process. And after two years, this was not at the Lenie, which was the, like the Bauhaus four courses, two years, uh, the student could choose to uh, uh, go to any kind of specialistic studies, so from architecture to ceramic, textile, uh, or um, sculpture, and, and so on. So the Osnova de Lenie was a kind of alphabetization, I don't know if it's correct, to say, an alphabetization of the um, of, of the young art. So, so the beginning, no theory, no uh, kind of practice, uh, no concrete um, goals, but only, only sensibilities, developing the sensibility uh, through to these basic elements of architecture, of uh, artistic expression, color, um, graphic design, and of course, space. This was how a uh, Russian architect was formed till 1919, till the year of the foundation of the uh, Futemas. And uh, this was the architecture that was still built in Moscow in the last years of Tsarist Russia. So to understand, to understand, the architects were formed in an academic, traditional way. They had to study uh, the styles, the churches. The first year was to build a house in a Gothic style. The second year was to build a uh, The third year was a uh, The last year was to build a public building in a neo ruski style or whatever. And to understand uh, the shift that was, that was made in 1919 to this completely new formation, we have to, just for 10 seconds, we have to go to back to Germany. To Germany, to understand that uh, Soviet, uh, the Soviets, and especially Anatoly Marchaski, who was the Minister of Education in uh, the beginning of the Soviet, uh, of the first year, so the first part of the uh, imported a kind of new, new uh, teaching techniques that was founded on German and American way of uh, teaching, the experimental teaching, Kids teaching, uh, so expressing talents, expressing uh, uh, sensibilities, working on form, working manually, working on colors, working on sounds, working on uh, where the play, not only the play with 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 uh, with the games, uh, play, play with manual composition, three-dimensional composition, but even physical play and the role of the body uh, was extremely extremely important, and this. Is something that is not common. I mean, it's not only kind of Russians. It, it, it had different, uh, different results in, in, in different um, contexts. Like uh, process that cannot be assimilated. Okay, but it, it, kind of common roots that develop in, in different way in the garden city in Hera with the work of Jacques Cross, or in the Bauhaus right, with Johannes Sitte. Even, even something that we cannot think about it really, is the social movement. In all Slavic uh, countries that developed uh, this, this anti German uh, uh, context, as well, with, with the development of sport in the debate was absolutely a kind of uh, no, no, absolutely no, no thing. So the, the students inside the Kutemas really started to work, not, let's say, uh, uh, any kind of uh, practical or, or um, Techn tech technical knowledge, but only of expressing their, let's say, their in spatial intuition. And uh, this spatial intuition, I'll go very fast through this exercise, which are absolutely interesting, were divided in four uh, stages, in four moments. No? And, and the first one was to express three dimensionality with three dimensional uh, field. So, three dimensional space and how to use material to express three-dimensionality in bi-dimensional contexts. The second one is to build a three-dimensional form to um, 
complex three-dimensional four with a different with different uh, materials. The third one was to express tectonic uh, tectonic um, uh, emotions, weight, uh, mass, lightness, and so on, to uh, on your sculptural effort. And the third one, uh, the fourth one, uh, the fourth exercise was to build, let's say, uh, put your object in a spatial, wider, wider spatial context. They could even could even uh, develop a kind of urban design, urban design uh, process. So we have these four stages. Now I will just uh, will try to explain how every single. I mean, they were working on these exercises for two years. How every uh, single exercise was developed. They had to introduce other elements, which is chilenenia, so the rhythmical differentiation uh, of uh, vertical and, element and uh, horizontal elements using light and shadow, uh, mm, uh, repeating, repeating, uh, repeating the same volume and the same material in uh, uh, n times, then to express mm, this these effects on the dimensional level of, of, of uh, uh, weight and lightness to change materials. Every material will, uh, will behave in a completely different way, way of, by, by adding things or by subtracting things, by carving or by uh, uh, making collages, by working with convex and concave, uh, concave elements and studying the way how this uh, these models, which kind of uh, emotion give to us. Very interesting, even the volumes. The volumes made by paper, the volumes made by uh, clay are completely different. The clay, we, 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 we produce a three-dimensional three object, but with a completely different problems. By adding, like a constructivist, or by carving, like Michelangelo. Or uh, working with thin elements that can think about light structure, uh, light stru steel structures, and, and, and heavy images, and heavy materials. Till the last exercise, which was uh, absolutely interesting, with, with, where this um, speciality was, um, uh, was explored in different ways, with the theater stages, but in effect with inner spaces that uh, associated to the theatrical uh, space. It could be developed in different, different times to the kind of uh, more and more and more complex process of adding elements in context. And every time that uh, a new element is added, changes even uh, the way how you, how you perceive and how you conceive it. So, three stages linear, three dimensional, and let's say spatial stage of this. Spatial sensibility. This is, in fact, something very simple and uh, very old, and it's called synthesis of art, synthesis of painting, sculpture, and architecture in the same kind of process, where this sensibility of form was um, the object of, uh, of this experimentation, of study, of, sens of sensibility. Uh, 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 a way how any architect works, a good, very good architect works, like Ladowski, that work on from the, the, the scale of the design, the scale of the urban scale, applying, applying this, let's say, psychoanalytic GST method, which was based uh, really on, uh, on rudimental, rudimental uh, scientific knowledge. But what is really interesting is that, as all architects are really liars and they really hide their sources and they hide their they are they're very jealous about their uh, levels. They never really explain where all this came from. No, no reference to the general culture, no reference to a part, just one, one data that opened up for me a very interesting uh, scientific research in which uh, he uh, explained that all this psychoanalytic chess method was based on the laboratories, the scientific laboratories of a German. Uh, a researcher called Wilhelm Wundt that in, uh, during the 19th century, more or less, we can say, and, uh, again a little exaggerating, found a kind of uh, psychophysiology as a kind of uh, autonomous, uh, autonomous branch of medicine 
in which uh, he experimented uh, and he worked on our sensations. How man perceives reality, how man perceives colors, how man perceives sounds and um, different, and developing this really rudimental, rudimental uh, instruments that uh, in his laboratories um, uh, were given. And these laboratories were spreading all, uh, all Ger uh, Germany and later even in Tsarist, uh, Russia, uh, that used books and used the methodologies of, of discovering this, uh, the process of perception. The relation between reality, so between an object, between a color, and our mind. And the process, how this mind filters this data. And they were developing, again, very simple experiments, very simple methodologies that started to put in question that maybe the relationship of what we see and what we perceive and what is real is not really transitive, it's not really uh, strictly connected. And these spectrograms, the choreographs, and these elements were uh, on market. There were even catalogs. Uh, the, the German catalogs, the, 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 I found in, uh, in the uh, Russian archives, uh, where these catalogs were s selling mm, these products and these, these uh, machines uh, developed by, uh, by. And Ladovsky built in, within, the, within his psychoanalytic method, within his let's say, laboratory with the students, he built these instruments, the glasometer, uh, the, the, the plot glasometer, no? to develop the, the, what, what is the distance, what is the focal point, how you work on this uh, 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 very simple element, to, uh, to build hmm, this kind of new, uh, new possible sensation. But what is the focal point of all this thing is that what wounds, and not only wound, but all, all, all these founders and all these um, uh, um, scientists of, of physiology uh, demonstrated, demonstrated, tried to demonstrate, and what Ladowski completely perceived, is that we order things spatially. So all the things that come from, uh, it's a kind of intuitive process, as we've already heard, uh, is an intuitive process that every uh, data that comes from reality is by intuition, by us, ordered in a spatial way. So space, in our intuition of space, is the let's say, major filter of uh, our comprehension of reality. We are talking about science in the 19th century, so don't take it uh, as, as granted today. But uh, going back to the fundamental um, Definition of Raumgefühl, Grand Fantasy, I'm sorry about this overlapping. Uh, one of the basic, uh, basic definitions of what architecture is by Nikola Ladowski in 1919, 1920 can be absolutely connected with this uh, German, with this German um, sensibility that I was describing before. Architecture is the art that operates in space. So, no technique, no uh, space. No? Space is the component, the, the major component of architecture. Space is present in every artistic discipline, but only architecture offers the possibility for a correct reading of space. Of course, the dimensional the painting is just a filter through which we read space, but it's not space itself. Sculpture is something static, and architecture is something that we use body and we use our perception in time through space. So, space is the material of architecture, not stone. Space must assist the sculptural form in architecture. And this is the kind of read that connects really, really closely with German uh, sensibility. Uh, maybe I will stop, uh, or I have five minutes more. Yes, no, I don't know. I think we talked already for 47 minutes. So okay, that's okay. okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> And then we come to the end if you want to. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay. No, I have another thing, but it's like 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay, then we thank you. Um, well, let's have uh, half, uh, five or ten minutes uh, of a discussion of this. Uh, please.
first question of clarification, it seems to me, concerning the notion of rationalistic mm -hmm. uh, aesthetics or something like that. Because I'm just wondering what is rational or rationalistic? Because what is the opposite? When the opposite side is to be talking about rational or rationalistic rationalism, you know, approach to something, to aesthetics that is irrational or, I don't know, emotional, empirical, you know, in the history of art philosophy. And I'm supposing that uh, rationalistic here actually correlate with the idea of scientific in some senses that, you know, that, our, uh, that, that some, you know, uh, uh, architectural acts or products or objects yeah, are based on the possible expected effects of our perception process of process of perception. So this is the experimental psychology of the of the uh, laboratory of the moon. So I'm just you know I saw uh, you you you, you uh, put put on the slides you know some some just sort of visual illusions you know so this is this is it. So uh, it seems to me that this approach to psychology to, to psychology or the theory of perception actually based on the science has or has some consequences and in this sense we are not talking about the intuition of space you know we are talking about very very specific you know process of perceiving the first phase the second phase and final phase is hypothesis you know you know this is the processing of the different theories from from whole so so I'm just wondering uh, 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 when you are talking about the rationalistic, you know, and on the other side, and, you know, some intuition of space, it seems to me that, you know, uh, searching for, for, for this scientific of experimental basis of our, our perception is something different from the idea of intuition of, of space, or is it just a symbolic notion? Just, just a question of clarification. Yeah, yeah. Which sense but uh, I think you already, in some kind of way, answered to, to, to because I mean the question of rationality. I mean, there are today, I mean, every 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 year we we, we, we change the, the words which are really in fashion. Now we have resilience, or a couple of years ago or something. In those years, it was rationality, uh, rational, and and uh, it, it is a word that that was used in that period to differentiate the rationalist from the constructivist. The constructivists were something, but they were working on the same artistic topic, but from a different point of view of the, of the goal. The goal for the constructivist was the direct intervention in uh, reality, to work with politics, to, to build, and to, to relate art, art operation, architecture operation to the new world. Formalists, or say the rationalists, were something that were still thinking that architecture has its autonomy. Its autonomy. This autonomy is based really on the research, um, let's say, let research on the speciality of form, on, on the special qualities of form. The, um, uh, the, the scientific uh, level of this operation was from our point of view today not really but from the point of view of maybe the the, the, the 1919 immediately after the war in Russia with still with still a civil war going on and uh, totally parallel to the Bauhaus experimentation was extremely 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 interesting and, uh, and um, in this sense uh, uh, the scientific level based on what was in fact, it was not psychology, it was physiology, because psychology is still something, is, is a, a second step, <coughs> is, um, is interesting, or in, in to, to see the, the, let's say, the instruments, uh, the formative uh, baggage, bagaglio uh, formativo, so this is in Italian, think of how uh, an American artist was formed. You know? This is really interesting. I mean, this is the, the, the interesting aspect of this not in set of the, the scientific uh, um, result, no? because it's, of course, purely rudimental. Yeah, uh, Luca, thank you very much. You brought it. You showed us a lot of interesting pictures also, which I did not know yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Very interesting also the subway, for example, mm -hmm. of um, Ladovsky. I didn't know 
um, because he is only known as a teacher uh, mainly. Um, but there's a, it was a really interesting question, yes, uh, Sneshana. You know, I always also a question: Why call they, they themselves rationalists? Yeah, although they apply a psychoanalytical method. Mm -hmm. Can you explain me what the psychoanalytical aspect is in this architecture? You know, it is might be based on experimental psychology, mm -hmm. but psychoanalysis is something no. totally different. No, no, it's not like psychoanalysis. Psy um, uh, psychoanalytic? Psychoanalytic? No. Analytical. It's not analysis. It's not analysis. It's meaning. Yeah. It's meaning. It's like. It's a confusion in. Uh, uh, it's a confusion. Psychoanalytic. Uh, yes, 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 yes. But based, not absolutely not based on Freud. Absolutely, Freud doesn't exist. This is uh, how they were sure. in 1919, uh, uh, looking at. Uh, it's a kind of. Uh, so, the rationalist, rational is, is the fact that they are trying to give scientific uh, basis to emotions, which is something that, let's say, we, we cannot assume by fact that it is uh, a kind of uh, rational. Uh, they, they are trying to explore this um, not material, uh, the immaterial uh, quality of architecture to but, understand. Okay, that. but they knew about Freud. Uh, uh, no, uh, in, no, uh, in the reference. But it's the same. Yeah, hmm? yeah but, but Freud at that time, if I may add, it's just a, uh, a kind of a, a fashionable way to deal with everything in a positivist manner. Uh, sure. Instead of making it rational, let's make it positivist. Mm -hmm. uh, um, explain what is visible and find reasons mm -hmm. uh, in that what is visible. Mm -hmm. And uh, Freud himself, uh, he was a physiologist, mm -hmm. uh, a, a doctor, mm -hmm. and he entered into this with Charcot, into this new uh, Experimentation, experiment, uh, exactly because of this positivism. He wanted some proofs for what is invisible, for what is not. Sure, but if you call your method in architecture psychoanalytic, oh, that's, that's a question of naming. So, I'm not. That's a, that's a problem, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not. Um, I'm not. Um, in 1923. Yes, so Freud was here in, immediately in 1900, and the book was out. Sorry, book was out. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was out in in 1899 already. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> um, immediately, this you know, yes. you could not anymore apply um, the term psychoanalytical method mm -hmm. to to something else. Yes. You know? So it, it is. Uh, so they reacted to, to the German uh, physiologists, to the mm -hmm. German. Um, 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 art historians really yes. have space in these kind of things. It was translated. So it would be interesting to know. I'm sure Freud was also translated. They knew yes, about yes, Freud, but yes. they do not mention him. No. Okay. Big, big problem. Uh, in the fact that, that uh, it is a problem from the point of view of um, our. Uh, I mean, it, it, you can find much more Regan than Freud, no? Mm -hmm. You can find more Voringer than Freud, you can find more... Uh, so, it's kind of what the context in that, in that period, that Russian context on which I really worked uh, really a lot, uh, what they are, what were, what was their uh, this theoretical discussion. Uh, Freud is absolutely not present in any way. It, uh, the problem, of course, is the definition by names, but this name change every six months. <laughs> then they become productive. Then they can become. Mm. It's a kind of a uh, game in which in, sometimes uh, we have to uh, maybe take it out to understand more the um, content of mm. the, the the research, and not the, let's say the just the, 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 the out there definition of, of it. Or sometimes mm. this play has to be made because. It's Unfortunately, they have not yet gone about neurosciences. No. But <laughs> then, then it's the same it's thing with every to uh, to other to art. Yeah. In yes. cinema, yes. just imagine yes. what was it? That, that was the, the childhood of the cinema, and it's still a reference uh, or in theater with Mayerhold, with Stanislavski. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the basis of mm -hmm. the 20th century. Yeah. Srebrenik 
yeah. is the basis of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, just a request of explanation. Um, if you can go to the last uh, uh, slide. Uh, yes, we did two quotation. Yes, you, uh, you quote, architecture is the art that operates the space. Mm -hmm. And then the second one, at the bottom, uh, uh, architecture is the art of space. Uh, uh, spatial creation. Mm -hmm. And then um, is the creativeness, creativeness of space. So what's the difference between operate with space and create space on the round Gestaltung is not only to translate spatial creation but creation of the space. The difference is that and, uh, where one. is the space? <laughs> the space is our intuition spatial spatial or uh, there's uh, the space out there. Uh, it's a void and uh, contenitor uh, preexist. So <laughs> okay. So the difference of these two uh, definitions is that the first one is um, written by an architect and the second one is by an art historian. So an art historian that analyzes and an architect that uh, operates in space. Uh, in, this is my, 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 uh, my interpretation of uh, this, this. But the space, in fact, is something that doesn't exist. No? Space starts to exist when you put two things together. No? And then space becomes to, to, to exist. And, um, uh, the, 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 w w you, you work with, it is, uh, the, the Russians call it otrizate nezorcesto, so it's a negative architecture. Mm -hmm. so what, everything that is, so the space that is produced by the volumetric, volumetric conformation of urban space, inner space, uh, what, what, whatever. So it is, um, uh, it's this negative, negative um, uh, shape that becomes as uh, you, you see during this uh, slide, it, it becomes something m more important than the building. Of course, you cannot divide it from, from but it becomes the, the, the effects of, of this space, so the relation between man and uh, the architecture filtered by space becomes more important than, let's say, the stylistic um, uh, quality or, or, or the style or, 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 or volume without space. And it's special. We're starting with configuration, not creation. Uh, yeah. Allora, this, this is a translation made by um, uh, my grave, mm -hmm. Francis my grave, in uh, the, um, the come si chiama, uh, Getty, mm -hmm. the Getty, Getty Institute. That, that they are they are using this translation. So I I, I took uh, my grave's uh, translation. Mm -hmm. Creation is more short form. The creator is yeah. the Schöpfer, so creation with the own mm Schöpfer. -hmm. But I think Ladovsky, you know, this is, uh, reflects his um, scientific um, um, approach to architecture that mm -hmm. he operates this space, you know, this space is not put into question, mm -hmm. while um, 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 Schmasser, of course, is interested in the creation of space mm -hmm. through, through man, mm -hmm. yeah, through perception. Mm -hmm. that, that would be probably. Well, I hope you're content with my comments on your paper.